In this video, I'm going to be breaking down my favorite five wide passing concept in Madden. This is truly my favorite play in the game right now. It's the best play. It's the most consistent play. It's the play that you must make go and the play that you will make go if you like to run five wide. You can use this concept from other formations as well. But this is my five wide receiver mesh concept. I absolutely love this play. And you can do it from almost any play in this formation. What's going on guys? My name is Cody and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If this is your first time visiting my channel, my channel focuses in on helping people become the best Madden player that they can become. And so if you want to get better at this game, I just want to encourage you to click the subscribe button down below. It's completely free to subscribe to the channel and it just allows you to stay up to date with the latest tips and strategies right here on the YouTube channel. All right, guys, so in this video, like I said, we are going over my favorite five wide receiver passing concept in the game, and we're going to do it out of two specific plays. The first play is going to be fade out, and the second play is going to be uh, the play uh, post wheel here. And this is two ways that I really like to run my mesh concept from five wide. Mesh has been my favorite play in Madden for years. I think it's one of the plays that is most consistent. It's going to be very good in Madden 20. Two, and I love it from five wide, especially in this year's game, because of some of the ways that we can attack the field, the whole field, and really get to some unique areas on the field. So we're going to start with this against the meta coverage, and like I said, we're going to start with the play post wheel. Now you don't have to have Hot Rod Master, but I do recommend Hot Rod Master, um, just because you can get if you don't have Hot Rod Master Slot Apprentice, um, just because you can get some really nice routes out of that. Um, but if you don't have it, we're going to show you some ways that you can run this without it as well. And if you want to get my full empty tray stack offensive scheme or my, my full Steelers five wide scheme, uh, you can get that down in the description. It's a part of my true fan membership, which is just five bucks a month. You can cancel it at any time. And by, you know, basically joining it, you get access to all the content that's already existing in there, as well as weekly updates with new content for offense, for defense, and, and also for um, competitive pro player breakdowns. So a lot of good stuff there for you. Uh, really good deal in my opinion. But anyways, let's go over this play. Um, post wheel is what we're gonna start with, and then we're gonna work from there. So what I like about post wheel is it allows me to have this really deep post route. And what I like to do is I like to just simply smart route that route. You're gonna find that this is gonna give you really, really good spacing. And all we're going to do is we're going to mesh. So we're going to just simply drag the X receiver. Um, this triangle receiver, you don't have to drag him, but I personally like to re-drag him. Um, you don't have to, though. And then I like to take the square receiver and put him on a corner route, and I'm just going to motion him out and snap the ball while he's in motion. What you're going to see is he's going to get in a really soft spot against the Mabel coverage. Most Mabel coverages are not going to be able to get out there on that corner route. That corner route is going to be something that's really consistent for us. Uh, to be able to hit and really that is our first read we're looking to the left and we're saying can we throw this corner out if we can throw this corner out we'll throw it every single time just like that hopefully our receiver will catch it the more times we throw it but as you can see it's very open against the Mabel coverage out of the Mike Bliss 3. Now once we look to our corner route, the next receiver that we're going to look to in our progression is we're going to work our way from the corner now to the middle drags. If we can hit one of these drags underneath, we're going to read both of them kind of at the same time. Um, we're going to look to X first and then we're going to look to the triangle. And those reads are really meant to be a two-step process. So we're going to look to them quick and if we can hit them, we're going to throw them. If we can't, then we're going to peek at this post and if this post, uh, this post gets under every zone, uh, every deep zone, you're going to have really good separation as long as you smart route it. It's a great man beater as long as you have a receiver that has over 90 route running, uh, 90 deep route running rating, um, which is the threshold for getting players open in man-to-man -man coverage this year. And so you've got that option as well. But then the other thing that we can do is we can actually hit these drags late once they cross the yellow zones. For example, one of the things that your opponent will do, I guarantee you, your opponent will do something like this. That basically, he will user that post route. And so for him to go user that post route um, and then maybe maybe you know do something else to stop the corner route, what that's going to leave is it's going to leave this right here for that triangle drag route really easy over the middle of the field for you to be able to hit um, very consistently against that coverage. This is also a really, really good man beater. And the reason why it's such a good man beater um, 
is many reasons, but one of those is just the double crossers. These double drag routes are so good. Uh, one of them will almost always be open against man to man. You just pick which one's open and throw it. Their user is going to typically go and defend the post route on this. Um, so if they get this look, it is very likely that their user is going to go user that circle receiver on his post which means that you have your corner route right here. I typically don't throw, and, and we're going to get into that in just a minute. Um, if you're sensing that they're in man-to-man, -man, so let's say that you're sensing, you know, like, like let's just say their tendency, you know, they give you a look like this. It looks like they're in man-to-man. -man. Uh, what you can do is just simply put, um, just don't motion them. And if you don't motion them, you'll see I give them a little bit more room, and you can kind of low pass it. Uh, once he cuts the outside or if you do motion him just give him enough room to be able to get open and What I mean by that is it's real subtle, but what we want to be doing is we want to make sure That he can get open right like just give him just a little bit of room here So now he has enough room to cut and as you see right there It's a lot more consistent against man coverage uh, than he would be otherwise so you have those couple reads against man to man and then the last read that you have uh, the wheel route typically won't be able to get open against man-to-man, -man, but the route that you can go to that typically will is the circle receiver. As you see, he cuts inside, and he's able to beat man-to-man -man coverage. So that is the first way I like to run mesh post. The second way I like to run it is a little bit more consistent, specifically against man-to-man -man coverage. And what we're going to do is we're just going to audible to fade out. And all we're going to do here is we're going to drag triangle. We're going to drag the X receiver, which is Gronkowski. And then what I like to do is I'm going to typically take the R1 receiver and I'm going to put him on a post route and smart route it. And then the circle receiver can either go on a curl route or an out route. It's kind of up to you uh, what you want to do. I personally prefer the curl route just for the timing of everything. You can throw the out route. I don't want to, and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So um, this out route on the right side is really good against man. It's also really, really, really good against seam flat zones which is the predominant way people are going to play the, the Mike Blitz 3 meta. So if you're getting a lot of cover 3 and you're getting a lot of cover 3 meta, specifically from this formation, you might see them um, run a lot of cover 3 invert to that side, to the, to the trip side, just to try to help with, with some of the bombs that we can do and some of the things like that that we can do from this formation. So if you start to get that, then what you can do is you can put that out route out there to circle, and you'll see here that against zone, He's typically going to get wide open against the cover, uh, the cover three Mabel, kind of the, bit, the meta version of the way people like to set that coverage up. So that's kind of your first read on this play, and then as you're, and then really what you're going to do is you're actually going to go from the out route to the other out route on the other side of the field. So you're really getting a full picture of the field. And when you look right, no, that's not there. So now you're going to come back left, and I threw that route just a little bit late. But one of the things that you'll notice from fade out, one of my favorite features of having that little out route that I can motion out is it's so good at, against zone coverage. So if your opponent is running a lot of zone coverage, it's good against man too, which we'll show in a second. But if your opponent is running a lot of man-to-man -man coverage, what you can do with this is when you motion it out, it's gonna create kind of a ghost route and you can basically just snap throw it against cover three or cover four and really against anything um, that is gonna have that deep coverage going back. And we're gonna talk about cover two uh, in just a second. So that's, that's the two out routes that I like, and I love these out routes. We already talked about the double drags, um, and what this is going to create is a little bit more pressure on that user in the middle of the field. So you've got your double drags, and then what's going to happen is if they sit underneath on the drags, you're still going to have that post route to Scotty Miller coming over the middle of the field. So you still have that idea of like that post, that out, the double drags. And so if there's, if, and, but, but what I will say is that the user is much, much more likely on this particular concept to really put himself in a bad position when it comes, when it comes to defending these drags. And this is why I love to have Hot Rat Master on this because what I can do with this is I can create a curl. And what you'll notice that that curl route's gonna do is it's gonna really open up this drag route. You see this drag can really cross um, over the middle and really put that seam flat in kind of a bind uh, with that curl route. If their user chooses to go guard the R1 receiver, one of your drags, if not both of your drags, will be very difficult to guard uh, from this perspective. And I'll show you that right here. So you're going to see here triangle right there, wide open, cut up field, and you've got about 15 to 20 yards 
against this coverage. This play is really designed to stretch the defense horizontally in about every which way they could possibly imagine. And so that's one of the reasons why I really like this play because it really does force them to have to really be aggressive and in dropping into like a cover two or a cover four defense. The problem in this year's game is if they were to drop into something like that or they drop into a cover two, that's where you can go to the fade out play and you can just say, okay, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to leave. Um, I'm going to leave circle on his fade, uh, and, and then you'll see that this is a this will become a phenomenal cover two beater over the top of the defense. If they're maybe giving you an inclination, they might be in cover two. You still are basically running the same concept. The major difference is you're just tagging a vertical route. That's all you're really doing. Everything else is pretty much the same. The cool part is you can do this on both sides as well. So let's say I wanted to attack verticals over here. Well, then I can basically run the same exact thing. I can run this right here. As you can see, this is basically mesh. The only difference is I've turned the, I put square on the drag and I've left triangle on his route. And what you'll see is now against cover two, triangle is gonna get over the top of that cloud flat and get over the top of the deep half on the sideline for about 30 to 50 yards, depending on how the defense defends this. So this fade out play is really, I think, the, a really good play. Um, you can mix them together if you have Hot Rat Master because what you can do is you can take circle and put him on a post and then maybe take X and put him on a crosser and then you could basically do something like this. Um, this is a great little concept right here. It's kind of another version of the same thing. But then the other thing that I like about the fade out play is how good of a route that X receiver or that square receiver is on when it comes to man to man. This is one of uh, one of the big kryptonites of mesh, whether it be from spread or uh, from shotgun spread mainly, is that it can struggle um, against like super press man to man coverage um, if they use the underneath well. Well, the cool part about this is this route to X is going to absolutely kill man every single time. And as you can see, you're going to be walking up and down the field for 9 to 15 yards, depending on the type of separation that you're going to get. So really, every single route on this play is going to be able to beat man-to-man -man coverage, which is really a, a, an incredible thing when you think about it from a 5 wide. One of the most popular defenses that you're, that you're going to get when you go 5 wide is you're going to get a lot of man-to-man, -man, press man type of coverage look. And if you can throw these post routes really well, and you can throw those fade out routes, and you can throw those crossers, you're going to have a lot of success against man-to-man -man coverage. Now, I didn't spend any time on match. Let me go grab a match defense real quick just to kind of show you uh, how this is going to work. You're not necessarily going to get like one play touchdowns against match coverage. Most people at this point in the season won't really run match coverage on five wide uh, just because it provides a lot of options uh, vertically if they wanted to go with something like that. The one thing I will say with this, and I've talked about this before, but if you basically take circle and you put him on the out route and then you take the X and you drag him and kind of do something like this, what you'll see is this R1 receiver, um, you know, really is going to open up these underneath routes. So he could be on a, a post, he could be on a crossing route. One thing I would say is if you just get X to go vertically, so maybe you take, maybe you take, um, you know, you just do something like this. And then, you know, maybe you have like X on a slant as opposed to a drag. He's still on an underneath intermediate crossing route. Um, but you see here how much opening you get with that square receiver. So the double drags are still going to be very effective. But what I wanted to get at with this is the other thing that you're going to have is if, let's say you go with that post wheel concept and we use the corner route. Um, this is going to be a really good match beater. You'll see here that the circle receiver is going to basically be isolated over the middle. Uh, and right there, I threw the ball just a little bit too early in the play. I was kind of worried about the block sheds. Let me show you this without being too worried about the block sheds. So let me just kind of get rid of those guys. And I just want to show you this post wheel play. So literally all we're going to do is we've got double drags so and we've got our corner route. And what you're going to see here is your corner route is going to be open. But the other thing that you're going to have um, this circle receiver does get double teams. I need to throw that, so I need to throw that just a little bit sooner in the play. But I've got my corner route. I, that's one on one coverage, and I can hit that every single time. Let me just show uh, post wheel, and let me just show like press coverage. So let's say you get you know your double drags just like so, just baby most just a, a smidge, and what you see is this corner route is going to glitch out quarters every time. 
So it's a very consistent read against quarters that you've got on this play. And then the other thing that you've got going for you um, as far as post wheel goes from this is this route to circle when he cuts inside. So right about there, that route can beat quarters because as you see that left side quarter is still on the left side of the field. He's not in the area to be able to play that. So on both of these plays, we've got really good opportunities uh, against match uh, against match coverage. And then the last thing that I wanted to show real quick against match coverage is what this R1 receiver can do. Um, so you'll see here, he's just gonna cut underneath it. And you see, I threw it just a little too late, but he is open if I throw that right on the cut. And then the last route that I wanted to show against match quarters is this route to the square receiver. You see we're going to get him isolated once again, one-on-one, -on -one, easy read for the quarterback, very similar to man coverage at the post, you got the out. But there's so many routes in this play that are really, really effective. You're going to have a lot of fun with this concept. This five wide receiver air raid mesh with motion snaps to get him into spread is really my favorite way to play offense right now in the game. So if you want to learn my entire empty tray stack scheme, I would encourage you to get that true fan membership. We're going to be updating some more concepts into there. We've already got pretty much the whole scheme in there, but we've got more on the way as well. So if you want to get that empty tray or that uh, true fan membership, it's just five bucks a month. You can cancel it whenever you want. And we update it every single week with new content for offense, defense, and we also break down pro players every single week. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you want to get that true fan membership, it is available down in the description.